Thank, Thank you. <laughs> Good. Great. Good evening, everyone. The time is 7 p.m. and we'll now call this meeting of the Board of Selectmen to order. Will you all please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, well, Happy New Year, everyone. Let's get uh, started here. So is there a motion to accept tonight's agenda? I make a motion we accept the agenda. Great. Thank I'll you, Sean. That. Thank you, John. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstention? Motion carries. Has everyone been able to review the minutes for our meeting of December 21st? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Is there a motion to approve? I make a motion we approve those minutes. And Thank I'll second it. Thank you, Sean and Ralph. Any errors, changes, or omissions? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstention? Motion carries. I don't have anything under communications and correspondence this evening, so we can move to public <coughs> comment. I don't see anyone in the audience this evening, and I don't see anyone in the chat, no, so the chat. I think we will move on to our monthly budget, oh, yeah, our monthly budget report. Our finance director, Tom Robinson, is with us this evening uh, to give us, I, I believe we're halfway through our fiscal year, so Tom has uh, the reports that have been passed out to you, and we'll go over the revenue and expenditures. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. <coughs> so, gave you all your uh, the uh, revenue and expense reports uh, for twelve thirty one. There, are some activity for December still wouldn't be posted yet, as it's. Um, only the second day of the month to get everything in, but I'll give you a you know a flavor of, of where we stand. So we're looking at the revenues. A couple of the items that um, we were uh, trying to figure out and understand, and uh, was able to get posted you know, recently, was 00212 and 00213, and those were two um, revenue sources that. Um, one, uh, they were both somewhat unanticipated. Uh, one was the municipal revenue sharing grant. That's been something they've been um, coming up with allocations for for a while, and, and I guess this is the year they decided to distribute the funds that were in that, uh, um, that, were, that were there held at the state. We uh, submitted a report that uh, manually that kind of shows how our budget ch changes based on some rules, and you have to meet a certain threshold. Um, uh, percentage-wise or the percentage of inflation and um, and and because we've uh, stayed within those spending limits um, the the missile revenue sharing monies that were allocated they were allocated this year um, and uh, that's uh, under the public uh, public act 22118 so that's a, a nice amount of money that came in this year uh, 02213 was a municipal transition grant um, this one, this is uh, related to the motor vehicle. Um, when you're over the cap, our mill rate last fiscal year would have been over the cap. And then with this year, the revaluation it went under the cap. But uh, it appears they've based the calculation on the, the prior year's mill rate. So uh, with that, we received uh, 233.39 in the transition. Um, this year, we'll, we're under the cap, so you would anticipate there would be little to none next year for that type of, um, of, of money. So that was one that, uh, that we got in. Um, just going down to recording fees, uh, the town clerk uh, uh, notified me that he did see, he has seen a slowing, a little bit of the recording fees in November and December. Um, and he feels that's likely due to the increase in the interest rates. Um, his other uh, numbers are looking, you know, within the budget area, but he, but he is seeing a, a slowdown in those recording fees. Uh, 030324, which is police private duty. Uh, those, uh, the billing for December hasn't gone out yet, 
and uh, those um, uh, amounts are strong. We uh, continually have jobs. We have jobs uh, with Mizzy, Ducey, uh, and uh, Rocky Mountain Fiber, to name a few. Um, and um, they anticipate a somewhat of a slowdown in the uh, winter months. And, um, you know, that'll probably be a swing back up. So we'll have to, um, right now, we'll, we'll have to discuss with uh, Captain Millardo where, where he thinks it'll go the rest of the year. And then, um, you know, likely in the springtime, we'll have to do a, um, probably like as we've done in the past, a supplemental appropriation of revenue, a supplemental appropriation of expense for what we anticipate that overage to be. Because when we get to the expense, you'll see we're already over on that line of, of the expense side, but we're definitely uh, to the positive in the revenue side. And then uh, on the next page, 00401. Um, as we as I talked about the last report, investment income has been quite a bit stronger. I mean, when we were doing the budget last time, I think we were in the point ones. And, um, you know, depending on the bank and the time, you know, you're in between the two and a half to, a, you know, almost approaching 4% return on like stiff. So um, that's a positive. Um, it's, uh, you know, we, uh, we, we definitely like to see that uh, positive swing. Uh, when the interest rates do rise, it helps us, uh, you know, get money on our money. So that's, uh, you'll see a positive uh, in, in that account. Any questions on the revenues? All right, so we're going to go over to uh, expenditures. Um, the first page is where election starts. And if you go to the second page, um, you know, we anticipated during the budget cycle, we talked about it, we went up a decent amount of increase in the percentage. But it's a, it's a tough one to call with, with, uh, with the elections and, and how many um, what the expenses will be and, and how many people will have. We did have a primary. We did have the November um, 8th elections. So uh, we're also seeing, obviously, the minimum wage um, has gone up. It's hit 14, and, and by June it will hit 15. Um, and therefore, subsequently, the, the other numbers kind of have to go accordingly up within the registrar and within the, the moderators and the assistant registrars. So we see that. Um, LHS, which is the ballot, uh, the, the vending the machine for the, uh, the voting machines, their fees were higher on this one due to the size um, and the number of positions on the ballot. So that was a little bit higher um, in the past years than we expected due to the, just the, the, the various size of the ballot. Election supplies um, um, were higher, and you know, again, we're doing those two, the, 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 uh, the two, um, different, uh, you know, the primary as well as the, gen the general election in November. Um, but, you know, what, what you see in, in you see it um, in the uh, revenue account um, with, it's, it's um, in the um, 00214 revenue account, um, uh, there's about a $4,056 that the state gave us for the, the, more or less the cost of the absentee ballot and app processing as as a, as a Help America Vote grant. Um, so although, you know, I'd like to speak and tell you where the things are going higher than we thought, we do have that revenue that came in um, to help address some of those. So that's also a, a positive in that scenario. But, um, the next budget that we'll talk about is uh, 17. 17 is a technology budget. We have had some some positive savings um, as we had only hired a uh, technology assistant director in October, which um, we're happy to have that individual on board. Um, but uh, so we've had some uh, positive savings there in 11001, um, but um, 1302, the overtime, that is uh, already gone over budget. Those areas are generally for alarms. Um, for David uh, to be at the various um, board of selectmen meetings and other board meetings that he has to attend, and then for other um, technology matters that may arise after his normal working hours. Um, 36050 um, is our 
that's on the uh, next page. That's our computer maintenance, uh, network maintenance. That's our third party consultant. Um, so we've had, we, we had to utilize them when uh, there was no other uh, employee to help out, but there was also rollouts of the body cameras. They're helping. Um, we have to make an, um, an upgrade to one of our financial management um, servers. Um, they had other issues on the cybersecurity policies that we're trying to remedy and roll out solutions. There were various computers that we had to uh, get that we purchased in the last fiscal year that we had to roll out to the staff and and uh, just various upgrades and changes um, in the uh, just kind of in the way business is done in the technology where there's a lot of it seems there's a lot more licensure um, um, activities that will be coming into play so we'll have to watch that in our next budget cycle and um, you know, David's working with the uh, um, technology group to kind of come up with uh, you know some numbers on that for, for the licenses next um, area was on the fire <coughs> department and um, the fire uh, the uh, fire department uh, the service contracts is um, 31,000 um, and that one uh, if you look at that it's, it's, it's over budget already I think that one is I think we're just we're, we're under budgeted in that line item I think that's a line item that's gonna have to increase in the future there's various items that are um, fire items that are uh, there and um, there are uh, items that are building items that go in that as well if it's if it's directly related to the firehouse so that would be like a example like an HVAC vendor it would be um, um, the sprinkler vendors for the various firehouses it's uh, Norcom for the communications software uh, and, and, and things of that nature it's uh, I think there's uh, some monies in there for a weather indicator so that the fire department knows how the weather's uh, gonna affect their their coverage so you know that's one of those ones where we'll have to watch that one and, and uh, I would anticipate we're gonna have to increase it because the costs there just you know are, are just continue to rise um, 023 um, Twenty-three is the police department. In the police department, uh, as I as we said, in the, the there's the private duty line. You'll see that is a one four zero one four, and it's at this point they've spent one hundred and eighty five thousand that line up. So that's about thirty four thousand over the budget. Uh, the revenue was around one hundred eighty five when that was out the billing in December. So that will be closer, I think, in the two hundred to fifteen range from what I was speaking with uh, Roseanne um, today. 31008 is a software licensing. That one is a line item that is under budgeted. Due to the Police Accountability uh, Act, there was a software that was required to be purchased that we, we purchased in uh, um, fiscal year 22 to get the process started. And that's a continual uh, license that will uh, be paid every year. And I think even for the three year term, it, it increased each year. And there's a that was one of them was approved as a, the vendor um, as it was sold by the police was a, was approved by the the, um, the chiefs or uh, uh, the department that runs the police so that was uh, one of the one they had to have in place so they can have their policies and, and some of their procedures in place so that's one we'll have to uh, budget for this year so we will see a, a jump in that and that's directly related to the police accountability 3402 slightly over budget at this time and that was uh, due to more modems um, when we rolled out the body cameras they were required so that is one that will be continually to stay over the number that we have budgeted so police accountability standards will um, cause you know it's a it's a challenge and then 
in that five year, um, I think it was a five year period, you know, we'll have to readdress the body cameras again at that point. So that's uh, one of those ones that they'll hit you every five years. And then O32, uh, um, the highway division, um, that's the overtime line item is over. Uh, they're doing uh, pretty good in, in their other lines. But the overtime was, and that was um, one of the most the recent storm in December uh, was a wind storm. Um, and that was on a holiday, which uh, caused quite a bit of overage, um, which is a little bit unusual to have a non snow event in the, in the winter. But that, uh, that caused that, which hit a holiday, which caused, um, I think that one event was a $4,000 event. I think those are the areas right now that I wanted to touch upon in the um, <coughs> the in 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 the uh, budget here. Um, in the, in the, the I guess there was one other area would be the O55, which is is doing okay right now. That's the municipal agent eligibility, but there has been a lot of push from the senior center as well as the you know um, individuals in the, in the public that, that you know have utilized that service that we have with the various uh, buses and, and the vans and the vehicles. Um, so there is a, a, a good possibility that there is, a, is a, going to be an overage in the van drivers. Um, and then obviously if you have a lot more driving going on, there's a possibility of an overage in the gas and diesel. So I know that that's a service um, that um, First Lieutenant Curley is working with um, Lynn to review. and. Uh, and, and working through that process, but I just wanted to bring that one to your attention. Is the you know it's only 33 percent of the van driver stipend is is uh, is left at this point. Thank you all. Um, before Tom goes, does anyone have any questions for Tom on any of the revenue or expenditures? Do you want to look over for a minute while you know he's here or? I have, a, I have just a question. I'm just curious because obviously we've talked everywhere about fuel and heating costs. Any sense of, I mean, I know it's kind of early in the winter cycle, but can any sense of how we're faring with that stuff? Um, you know, it's, it's not great, <laughs> but I mean, it's um, um, Certain accounts you'll see you've seen that you're seeing that they're over in certain areas. Um, certain certain accounts are you know there's changes in employees and changes in habits and um, changes in how things are allocated a little bit. So we're seeing that. Um, you know we're interested to see and um, I know there's been some changes. Uh, Eversource had uh, stated that they were going to have some distribution and supply charges going up. So it'll be interesting to see how that how that comes out and. Um, you know, uh, during this upcoming budget cycle, we'll probably try to maybe reach out to our liaison and see if they can give us any insight on you know what that you know percentage will be to help us when we when we budget for the next round. Our supply, we're on our supply on electricity, we're locked in at a fairly strong rate. So that's a, that's a positive on the uh, supply side, uh, but you still got the delivery side, so that's a, a challenge. Um, we're floating on all other fuels at this point. Um, I think uh, the gasoline bit, I think just recently made it, might have come out. So I'll have to, we'll have to keep an eye on that. And then I think the oil, um, they, they're requesting the items uh, for the oil bit on, uh, I think that's, Craig will send that out. I think it's around January, late, late January, January 20th or so. So, but right now we're in the float. When I last time I had reached out to um, our gasoline vendor, you know, should we lock? Should we, you know, at the time he said, you know, keep floating. Um, so, yeah, I kind of we're working with these vendors for a while, and we try to, you know, listen to what they say. And generally, um, the float price has been reasonable. There's been, you know, diesel's been harder. Diesel's been uh, painful. Um, because I think we were at about 350, and a lot of times we're paying the four, 470s, and you know what I mean. So that that one's a little bit more painful than the gasolines, Ben. Um, but every you know we, we keep an eye on you know if we can see a drop, or 
one of our vendors reach out and say, hey, you know, this is a good time. Um, that's, uh, that's what I have on that. Thanks. Okay. Any other questions for Tom while he's here? I think, uh, I think to sum it up, I think revenue overall is, is we're doing very well. Uh, and expenses, we just have some areas that we want to keep an eye on. Yeah, doing well in some areas and, and, and expenses as well, but <coughs> there is, I always like to tell you what you want to keep your eye on. Exactly. Well, thank you, Tom. Thanks, Thanks Tom. Tom. Thanks, Tom. <laughs> right. Well, we will move on to appointments to boards and commissions. Are there any appointments? No. Any appointments? No. Okay. We'll move on to refunds of excess payments. Uh, make a motion for refund of excess payment. Patricia G. Peters, $170.08. I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstention? Motion carries. Motion for a refund of excess payment for Jennifer Gambacorda, $340.62. I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstention? <coughs> motion carries. Motion for a refund of excess payment, CCAP Auto Lease Limited, $715.73. I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstention? Motion carries. Motion for a refund of excess payment. Source for document imaging products, LLC, $46.39. I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstention? Motion carries. Motion for a refund of excess payment. Karen M. Reinhart, $119.87. I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstention? Motion carries. Motion for a refund of excess payment. VW Credit Leasing Limited, $540.51 and $546.19. I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstention? <coughs> Motion carries. All right, we'll move on to status reports. Uh, I just wanted to give a, a couple updates this evening. One is, as, as Tom alluded to uh, when we were going over the, uh, the budget report, we did have a, a storm on December 23rd in, in Portland. Uh, I think overall, uh, I think the town's response was excellent. Public Works was out. It was a wind storm that, that kind of turned into an ice event with um, you know, some freezing and, and severe drops in temperature. And we did have several downed trees in town. Uh, even at town hall, we had a, we had a tree that was down, and um, and so EverSource uh, did have a as they do with these major storms, they had a liaison that they appoint to the town of Portland, and that liaison and myself and and our public works director Ryan O'Halpin, we uh, we stayed in in routine contact with one another throughout. Uh, uh, the event as that we did have a number of, of power outages. I think around 300 uh, customers were out at the at the max. And normally that's not really that big of a deal, but when you're dealing with those uh, temperatures that we were dealing with, it, it can be troublesome for people. So I, I do want to uh, just thank the Portland CERT team because on Christmas Eve, they, uh, they organized uh, with, with just a really a, not very much notice at all. And we opened up the warming uh, center at the high school. And although no one did show up, we, we were there. Uh, and so we were there for, uh, for four hours for residents in case they needed water or uh, you know, electricity or to uh, you know, charge their phone. So uh, I just wanna, wanna thank every uh, CERT member. Also our, our fire department, uh, Bob Shea was there as well and uh, there were members of the fire department there. So uh, certainly uh, I want to thank them all uh, for uh, giving you know, their time generously on, uh, on a holiday at a moment's notice. So I want to thank them for that. Uh, and I think the last people to get power back got power around two o'clock on Christmas day. So it was a, it was a time consuming event, but, um, but thankfully everyone did get power back on Christmas. 
Uh, as far as other projects go in town, just to give you guys some brief updates, GZA continues to do their preliminary work on the water. Uh, Rich DeRosier was sending uh, uh, some correspondence back and forth uh, today asking, uh, so trying to get more information on a number of different town uh, properties in town as well as uh, some existing well information. So they're getting close to presenting the town with some areas that they would like to uh, test, have some test wells, but they're not there yet. They're still doing that preliminary work, but they are, they are working on that uh, every day. So that's great to see. Uh, the Brownstone Avenue project continues to move along. If you notice, if you drive by, that pile is, is gone uh, and the, the clean fill will be coming in. Uh, so we continue to work with uh, Ty and Bond and uh, ECR on that project as well. And we are waiting more details on our uh, steep grant on our sidewalks. We're waiting on that contract. But uh, our uh, town engineer, Jacobson and Associates, are are doing some work uh, or will be doing some work on that to get those sidewalks in because we want to get going on that as, as quickly as possible. Um, any projects that, that I'm missing that anybody would like to know about? Well, um, Russell Ave. No Russell Avenue is out to bid. The uh, engineering is out okay. to bid for both the, the Russell Avenue and the, the Co Avenue projects. <coughs> Uh, as far as uh, as far as um, an update, as far yeah. as uh, fixed assessment agreement, as far as the kind of the whole thing, just the whole a, thing, a, yeah, anything. Um, so the latest with with the Brainerd Place development is they're going back, they're um, seeking a uh, another uh, site plan modification for the drive through of the Starbucks building per uh, Starbucks request. So that's something that, that has to go through um, planning and zoning. And uh, I do know that the plans for the first building, the, uh, the apartment building, Building E, is with the ICC for review. That's, uh, Sean, do you know the abbreviation for that? No, I know what it is. Though. You know what it is? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but that's who does the, uh, the, the review of the plans. Tom, you know what's this? Yes. International Commercial Code. So they're reviewing the plans right. for Building E. So once they review that, then they'll be able to uh, move forward with that. Uh, as far as the fixed assessment agreement goes, I had a conversation with Dan Bertram uh, just before Christmas, and he has promised to get us something to review by the end of this month. So I hope to have that by the end of January so we can have a... Uh, a meeting, an executive session with our town attorney to go over that, and uh, and then you know make any modifications as necessary. Um, but that's pretty much it. For uh, that's pretty much all I have for now. They they continue to work. You if you drive by, you see them there. Um, so yeah, anything else? The uh, solar project. The solar project at. Um, the transfer yes, station? Yes. Uh, actually, we have a meeting tomorrow at 3 p.m. on that. Okay. So the RFP went out. Uh, if any selectman would like to attend that, it's a virtual meeting. If you want to oh, hop yeah. on, Mike, I can send you the uh, oh, that'd be great. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, please. Yeah, okay. Uh, so, yeah, I just want to make sure it doesn't become a meeting, though. Right. right. Yeah. No, I'm, so, I'm, I'm too, busy. <laughs> John, I want to make work for middle time. Time. <laughs> you, can, you can go. We can have, I'm going to be moving my daughter into her apartment tomorrow, but. If I'm available to jump on, I will. Okay, but we can have three, we just can't have four. That's yeah. three. Yeah, you can't okay, have so right. yeah. Okay. Yep. I'll be in the meeting. Okay. So anyways, the, uh, I believe it went out to bid. I think we got five, we got five bids oh, for the project. So really we're going to go over that tomorrow. That's really the only information I have at the moment on that. Okay. But, uh, but that meeting is scheduled for 3 p.m. tomorrow. Uh, good question, though. Uh, I should have mentioned that. Um, the package for the brownstone bidding, the RFP. Package for the brownstone. We want to go with the new RFP. Do mm -hmm. you have a time frame for when you want to get that out? Or Early in the new year, but I haven't had a time frame yet, no. Yeah. But yes, we're, we'll be doing an RFP again, um, but uh, probably, I'm thinking by, uh, Early spring, the latest. Like probably, I'd li ideally like to get it out by March. 
But again, I, I would I want to talk with Ty and Bond too, see what their recommendations are. Uh, really, you know, want to make sure that we uh, do everything correct when it comes to this one. And that's all I have. So, what do you got, Ralph? Amazingly, I don't have anything because <laughs> the last meeting I had all my updates, so I don't have anything to add. Okay. <laughs> Anyone have any other status updates? Mm -hmm. I don't think you saw that. Water main break today. We did have a water main break yeah. today. Yeah. It was it was a, an existing break right. that, that was known about, but they did have to shut uh, some valve, valves off on Main Street. So there was a brief outage for, for some residents, but uh, Public Works uh, worked pretty quickly and uh, they got that break fixed. So. Um, yeah. It was a service leak. Uh, yeah, right. a service leak. Was name? Excuse me. Yes. Yeah, Thank yeah. you. That's I, what I, I I'd like to give and kudos. Half the valves didn't work. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I would give kudos to the fire department too. I was following the issue the other night with a, a fire on Upper Coval Hill, oh, and we well, had our guys on mutual assist, and we had to call them back in. It sounds like that was a crazy show, but it sounds like the guys did a bang up job on that house, and it was a very good stop. Yeah. So kudos to those guys. Yeah, thank you, John, for mentioning that. That was, uh, th yeah. Were you there, Sean? Yeah. yeah mm -hmm. Thank you. Was, yeah. Unfortunately, we've had a lot of, uh, a lot yeah. of fires lately. So it's, uh, hopefully that's the end of that for so. uh, a long time. <laughs> uh, okay. So with that, we can move on to public comment. I don't see anything no. in the chat or in the audience. So we'll move on to Board of Selectmen general informal discussion. Does anyone have anything they would like to talk about? I'll look this way uh, to start this <laughs> evening. <laughs> Nothing tonight. Uh, I guess that's every. No. <laughs> <laughs> what do you got, Bobby? I just got two things. Uh, one, I wanted to, since we're coming up into budget season, and we haven't had a hurricane or a severe <coughs> storm here in years that we need to look more about budgeting for taking down, you know, older trees and damaged trees, especially um, east of 17, because it wasn't really a bad windstorm for, you know, on the 23rd, and a lot of people lost power. So I wanted to look into, you know, raising our budget for tree work in the town. But were they town trees that took the wilds down, or were they Trees on individuals' well, properties. No, I, well, it's, I think a lot of them were close to the road, like out of which is within that setback off yeah. the middle of the mm -hmm. street. But I know there's some Michael had marked last year after a couple storms. They still see ribbons on and up on, on Penfield Hill. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. Do we still even have a, a tree warden in town? Technically, I think it's the Public Works Director. Because we used yeah. to have we one used to have years it. ago. Yes. Would, wasn't would Don, Mark years ago, wasn't it Don Kelsey? It was him for a while. It was Harry yeah. Hetrick. Yeah. It was yeah. Art Kelsey. Johnson for yeah. a while. Harry yeah. Hetrick, yep. So, yeah. I mean, I think it's, I think Bobby's right. There's. I, I just want to be proactive for mm -hmm. it at once. Instead of, we wait for the storm to come, and then we're apologizing to residents, and we're spending days cleaning stuff up. If some of it we can take care of at our leisure and at our expense instead of paying overtime and, and stuff like that to clean it up. No, I think that's a good idea. And, cool about you and, the committee to work and now from, you know, <laughs> from what you said, Sean, I'd be curious how many out there are sitting there pre-tagged already. Yeah. They've already been designated for removal. How many we have out there? Uh, Tom, do you have something to add? That is true. Yeah. Well, I'm, well, that's the thing. I'm thinking of everything on the other side of the street. I mean, because Eversource is pretty adamant about coming through town every yeah. year and doing mm -hmm. tree work, but the other side of the street is the town's responsibility. Mm -hmm. so, so you're thinking of trees that may fall, right? And, well, yeah, yeah, whether it's taking out a power line or is blocking the road. Mm -hmm. You know, no. That's something that's always on our budget. We do have a tree clearing line yeah. item, and, and that's something that we can, you know, look to possibly fund more now. Yeah. And uh, so it's one of those things I remember. There used to, we used to have a, a tree subcommittee on the board of selectmen. We could 
could look to revisit that if you. If Bobby you wants to be chairman of that. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was always funny because uh, <coughs> part of the committee would look for places to plant trees, and then the other duty was looking for where, which trees to take down. So you're always <laughs> kind of creating more work for yourself with it. But I'm uh, all for taking them down. So. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Um, the only other thing I had was when we talked at the last meeting and we were going over the committees and stuff like that, and it was that committee that had no members on it. That was the one that's supposed to oversee town projects. Mm -hmm. Yep. Isn't that kind of what we do here every other Tuesday? Well, that's why we don't have anybody <laughs> on that. Yeah. You know, that's that's <laughs> why we. Yeah. I mean, I think it's Could just we a different. It? You you can. I mean, honestly, it can just. Kind of, you could you could eliminate it. Um, it doesn't. Right now, there's no. I don't know. I don't see a need to eliminate it because we don't have anyone on it, and it's not. Okay. You know, if but you doesn't have the reason to eliminate it. I know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I mean, <laughs> yeah. If it's, it's it's been around for almost a year and a half, there hasn't been a member on it, and I don't see a need for it mm -hmm. because we discuss every town project here whenever we have a meeting. Well, I think the thought, and we talked about it at the last meeting, one of the thoughts, and I know, Ralph, you were here when that yeah, was Yeah, and I, I, can, I, I meant to go back and look at the, we had this conversation with the holidays, they totally space. Yeah. I, I need to just probably go back and just look at what the intention was and, and get more, so I can at least remember. I, I just can't remember. Well, I remember, from what I understand, we talked about several different projects combining that they would they would look at and the projects were the uh, the brownstone avenue project uh, and the riverfront the river uh, the park project that we're, we're trying to put in um, that pathway to the river right and so instead of using that uh, committee what we did was we created a river access committee instead mm -hmm. so that was the thought process instead of have you know I, I was thinking we should have more targeted committees rather than a very broad committee that looks at a lot of things. Um, so that's why we didn't actually put people there, but I mean that was that was the thought process, but you know, we can always revisit that. It exists if you want it if you want to close it. I, I guess I just don't you know whether I it exists or the, does the it. point of it because it's a committee overseeing committees. Yeah, but right now it just it's just words on a paper. It's you know what I mean? Yeah. It's not it's not something that I don't. I don't think it's a pressing. You know what I mean? It's no, it's not uh, a pressing issue. I just think it, that it's a it's a waste to have or it was a waste to ever create it. Well, okay. <laughs> I, I didn't create it, Bobby. I don't know what you. And I'm <laughs> glad you did. I, I love it. When the discussion we had, it, it seemed to make good sense. But mm -hmm. you're right. Right at, right after that, we then formed a committee that was specific to the river. Mm -hmm. The river. Uh, access. Mm -hmm. access. Right. So it, so it sounds to me like it was there was probably some thought to the two river fronts mm -hmm. had some commonality and maybe that committee could could cover or oversee both of them, but you're right, they've created a separate committee for it. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. It, it it makes more sense to me to have a, a committee for each project, each park, whatever's going on, because that's their <coughs> main topic and that's what they stick to. Yeah, let me just find out. Let me try to refresh my Mike, do you remember any of that? I know you weren't here last meeting. I don't know if you... I remember like, when we made the committee up with under Susan's watch. Yeah. I, I, I'm i with uh, Ralph on this one. Like, I got to remember mm -hmm. why we were thinking it was a good idea. It made sense at the time, <laughs> but then we did these other things, so I don't know if that negated... What's that? With the projects, I can't remember what it was titled. Come on, Bobby, you can't mm. bring it up. Come on, we gotta it's have it written down. By. <laughs> You're right. The intent was to wrap all the projects into one little bundle and have someone oversee them, but I just don't. It never came to fruition. I think it was right at the end of our. It was in October. Right before the new mm -hmm. camp. Uh, New regime came on board. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm, I'm sure the thought was when you got two on the river and you have species that they're investigating, and you got Army Corps of Engineer requirements. If you didn't have two committees, those things would overlap, and you could deal with everything mm -hmm. for both projects. But if they created another committee, 
What was the name of it, Brian? The Town Projects Review Committee. That's Do we know if it was supposed to be members of this board or just general public members? I don't think so. I don't think it's no. a subcommittee. It's a no, it wasn't a subcommittee. It was intended to be other individuals. Because mm -hmm. ironically, we talked about people being on it, or two of the people that are on the Riverfront Access Committee. So. Exactly. Well, that's kind of, <laughs> and that's where we, we kind of went with that. That almost mm -hmm. seems like one of those committees where you take the chairperson from all the other committees and have them sit down together, and <coughs> that's what it would be tell each other what's going on yeah well yeah I mean there is a benefit and I, I I've seen that other stuff I've and done it's very easy to have multiple committees going their own separate ways but it's good to have those that that crossover periodically so you all are speaking to one another and you're not recreating the wheel 17 times yeah you know, and that could be the thought behind it but again I appreciate it maybe if you guys could pull up the notes from that yeah I'll, I'll, I'll track down the notes that I have and if it if the creation of other committee on its freestanding negated the need for it, then we can just talk about it next meeting about jettisoning the thing. You know? yeah. Anything else, Bob? No, I said okay, good. Because <laughs> <laughs> you're back. I, I you're, said you're I had two How about you, Sean? Isn't good today. <laughs> <laughs> I I do have one more thing that I, I wanted to uh, bring up with you all is uh, now that we are meeting at 7 p.m. instead of 7:30 p.m. Yeah. One of the things that that could potentially affect is our budget workshops. So in the past, we always typically have begun our budget workshops at 7 p.m. Now, sometimes on Wednesdays, when we have a Board of Selectmen meeting, what we would do is we would begin a budget workshop meeting at 7 p.m. and then we, would, um, then we would pause that and have our Board of Selectmen meeting and then reconvene the budget workshop. So I don't know, and I wanted to ask the board if you would like to start budget workshops at 6.30 as opposed to 7 p.m. Sure. Is, that, is that a well, conflict? Uh, why wouldn't we just do it after the meeting? Or we could do it after the meeting. We could do the whole budget workshop after the meeting. Well, it just doesn't make sense to me to talk for a half hour, then have a board of selectmen meeting, and then pick up what we were talking about before the meeting. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you can. At least especially in out. the beginning when there's really not a lot yeah. like in the first the first meeting Tom just said you can get a lot accomplished in a half an hour just so in case it didn't get picked up on the microphone so I it's a thought I don't know I mean, if it looks like you have one, one conflict so the problem is is if we switch the time of that you keep the time for the other you know mm -hmm. or we like or that. we start at seven like we did well, it would be two and Wednesday. Oh, right. Last year, and then. No, be the one. No, no, no just one. be the one. Just the just one. Just the one. <coughs> I say you just keep it at seven. And if then, it's just that one. And then break at the seventh or whatever. Well, you, what would you have to start at seven? The board, uh, the board of selectmen meeting, then go to. The budget. I, I think it might be hard for me to get here before, any early, like 6.30. Okay. So, I mean, that's just me, but. I mean, either way, we're going to go on these days longer than we normally would because we'll have a regular meeting and then we'll have a, uh, right. a budget workshop. Yeah, yep. that's so. I just wanted to see what, what the consensus was. I'm fine with with you know either way, but um, but I, I do recognize seven. We're already starting at seven. <coughs> could uh, potentially po cause some issues for for some for some of the selectmen. So. Why don't we, we'll have the regular meeting at 7 p.m. Uh, once we end that, we will then start the, our first budget workshop on Wednesday, March 15th. Perfect. And uh, the first selectman does control the agenda to a certain extent. So <laughs> yeah, and some of those nights you just make sure that the, the meeting it's agenda a is a late, manageable one. It's a late agenda. The only, issue, the only issue I can think of is, is we don't, by doing that, we don't technically have a start time for the budget workshop. So maybe we would start the budget workshop at um, 6.59, you know, and then... And then recess. And then recess. And recess and then go into this. Yeah, or something. then that gives you a start time. Yeah, then that right. gives us a start yeah, time. Okay. So I'll figure for that, I'll figure out the details the, of that, but, yeah. but we'll, uh, for, uh, we'll move forward with 7 p.m. is when we'll get to work. Which is all you need to Okay.
Anything else for general and formal discussion? Mm -hmm. Apparently not. I think we All right. discussed right. everything in the reports. Uh, I have nothing on follow-up items. Uh, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. Um, I have one thing. We talked about reviewing the town charter. Mm -hmm. Are we going to maybe put a calendar on uh, when we're going to have a discussion of what we would like? There are certain things we would like actually reviewed in that and a time frame when we have filled the uh, the town charter revision committee filled and I'd like a timeline on when they come back with what we're looking for so it doesn't continue to drag on and drag on I'd like this to be done um, in months and not years like in the past well the a charter review do you have um, I mean that's something that we can I'm, we can certainly do we can Typically, you would make a, uh, a committee, a right. charter committee, and right. um, and you would charge them with with looking at the charter and, and finding things and suggestions for for changes, and then bringing that. But I think to there's the board. there's things in there that we know that we've seen evolve over the time that need to be addressed, and I think we should come up with our recommendations of some things we'd like to see, and then have them review the charter, but I don't think this is something that needs to go on forever. Mm -hmm. That's my opinion. Mm -hmm. we can I'd like to have a, a time frame on it. Okay. Um, we can do that. I mean, we can have a charter review uh, committee if, the, if that's something that the selectmen would like to to look at. I, I have no, no issue yeah, with that. I, I just have one question because I can't recall off the top of my head. On the approval of the charter, the town votes on it and is there a certain percent, like does that, there's a certain percentage on that, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah. that comes into play where you got to kind of revolve and work around elections to try to get enough people that are going right. to show up. And usually I think in the past it's been done on it at an election, like we voted on it, if I remember correctly. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, you could have charter changes at, at a referendum questions right. on a ballot. You can, you can certainly do that, <coughs> and um, typically, I mean, it would be up to, you know, the, the committee and, and then this board. Because I, you know, what I, I'm sure, I, I'm trying to find it, but I don't know what, like Ralph said, what the percentage we need to change that. Yeah. Well, it's in the if charter. It, I know, and I'm mm. going mm. through the charter line by line. Okay. So I won't, when I get to that, we'll figure out how we have to do this, but mm -hmm. whether it has to go through the referendum so we get a, another number of votes, or can we just do a, a, a vote at a public hearing? No, you can't do a vote at a public hearing. So you, you answer no. it. Yeah. <laughs> so you no, answer no, no. the question. No, a charter, anytime <laughs> you change the charter, that's, that's, it's, it's a, it's a process. It's right. not. It's not so, just. So uh, that's why I'm asking, and you didn't. Mm -hmm. You didn't answer. The oh question. no, I'm that sorry. Right I, if I if I didn't answer it clearly, it would have to go to referendum. You would have to. You have to vote then, on it. And right. I think what what Ralph was saying is that uh, you may need a certain amount of um, voters present and voting in order for that for that referendum to to count. Yeah, and, and if you were to do it separate, now you're t incurring additional. Right. right. You do well, that's why I'm because saying you're already you already attach it to an election. You attach it to an election. That's what I'm getting at. Mm -hmm. not, I mean, not having it out there for two, two and a half years and getting forgotten, and then all of a sudden we bring it up and it goes to election. It's something I think that's important that needs to be done. There's some things in there that I think everybody agrees that there's a few things in there that need to be changed or at least looked at that I would like to see them get changed. Well, just uh, I'm looking at the charter now. And just it it starts at section 101 and ends at section 1,413. Right. <laughs> so well, it's it's I, it's a big task. Right, there are. Can, that's. <clears throat> but go back and look at the previous charter revision committees and how how what they went through and mm. then what they presented and how much just got a black 
X through it and wasn't even presented, you know, to be changed. I mean, there's some things in there that I don't think really uh, need to be looked at or changed, but I think there's some things that the way we govern need to be changed and where we sit today in 2023. Yeah, I mean, uh, that's that's the consensus of the board, and yeah, I, I think we can we can certainly do that. I mean, do you have a time frame in mind, Sean? Is what what you want to see as far as you know? I, I mean, in order to to do what you're talking about, right. it's a it's a it's a very lengthy. No, I understand know, that, but I don't want to see us in in April saying, "Oh, we got to get a committee together." Well, I, I mean, I, I'll be honest. It was not on my radar for for well, April. I mean, well, we just. We I mean, we discussed this. It went by, went by, went by. No one, and then, I think about a month ago, it was brought up. Uh, myself and I think Bobby or several other said that we think we should look into this. So, last time it was amended it was in two thousand four. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah, but there was a committee in two thousand eight as well that that did review the charter and did did you know. Um, but um, is but there a, is there a stipulation of how often it has to be reviewed? Uh, the suggestion is uh, they they like you to review the uh, charter every ten years, but it's not as far as I know it's not mandatory. There's no there's no rule that says you have to. But it's just a suggestion. It's it's uh, I mean it's good practice. I mean things change. Uh, it's a it's a document that has certain thresholds for dollar amounts that, right, that change over time. Uh, so, um, so I mean, it's always, it's good to look at it. Um, you know, I, I, I do think we, we have a lot on our plate coming right. up. That's the only, no, that's I know. my only I, hesitation the, 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 is that. It, it, the, the, the way I understand, we can't just go, one of the things I'm, is that dollar threshold, which we've talked about, is I think needs to be looked into. So it's not, something that we can just go okay we need to look at something in the charter to change with the changing times mm -hmm. the way i'm looking at the way it has to be revised mm -hmm. so we have to go through this whole charter revision committee and look at the whole charter mm -hmm. and that's why i'm saying there's some things in there that we kind of get stuck behind the eight ball because mm -hmm. they it doesn't get looked at every 10 years or times are changing faster than we're changing mm -hmm. So, I know we have a lot on our plate. Yeah, that's, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but no, it is important to review the charter, and that's, which is why it's on, it's why it's a follow-up item. Right. And so, uh, so yeah, if, if, if uh, we want to put a, a charter review committee together, uh, I think that's a, you know, it's a good idea. Uh, anytime you look at the charter, there's, you always got to be careful because, you know, obviously there's things that, that can't that I would say it's time to change some things and but when you you have to go out to referendum and right. on each one and so voters tend to like some change but not too much change and you know trying to find that balance it's a it's a tough job of the chart of any committee to uh, to find things that um, that there's consensus on uh, mm -hmm. to change so um, which is why it's it's just delicate. You know what I mean? It's a it's a delicate. No, I understand. <laughs> so we got to uh, if we're going to do that, then uh, I, I would say let's uh, let's have more serious conversations about um, about forming a committee and and thinking about what what are some things that you'd like to see uh, in a change, and then um, certainly the formation of a committee who would who would be on the committee as well. Uh, so that's something that you know I would say. Let's let's carry forward with this at you know at a future meeting. Can you put your hands, Ryan, on some of the notes from the establishment of the previous review committees for our next meeting, just to see what they were talking how they about. went about it, how many members are on them? Well, yeah, as an old so has all the members are in the in, in the, the book, book. but. Um, and, and many of the members are uh, you know, around, you know, I know, I think Terry Larson uh, had been on just about every charge of review committee. Mm -hmm. She's probably the, the best person, you know, to speak with um, about that. But, um, but yeah, no, I can get some, uh, some notes. I know the clerk's office has a lot of uh, that information, so. Yeah. 
All right. Other than that, if you still want somebody to make a motion, I'll do that. <laughs> when you're done <laughs> writing. Unless someone else has anything else. Well, I guess I'll second the motion if you're going to take uh, it. I'm going to say, <laughs> we're good. I make a motion, we adjourn. All, right, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Have a good night, everyone. The time is 7.55. No longer the motion.